welcome. It's great to have you here this morning. We would not be out here this morning having worship if uh, some folks didn't come out early to make this happen. And I want you to know who they are, and I want you to appreciate them. Turbo, I don't know where he is. He just left. He doesn't like any limelight. Turbo came out early to help. Vince came out early to help. Uh, Mal, I don't know where Mal is. He came out early to help. Uh, I don't want to forget anybody. We had... Everybody that came out early, stand up. Do it. Do it. Those of you who are standing up, y'all didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Cat came out. Uh, Miss Q came out. So we had some people come out early to help. So uh, thank you so much for allowing that happen. Five fifteen Turbo was out here with chairs. Yeah. Thank you so much. Welcome to worship this morning. Thanks for coming here. We're so glad that you have chosen this place to worship. We're a unique group. What you see is what you get. So pretentious. It's, we love God. We love people. And we're glad you're here. We have a special group with us this morning. Saroy's Church. Saroy sent me a text a couple weeks ago and said that uh, Overflow Fellowship Church wanted to join us this morning for sunrise service. And we're so happy to have you with us. And their pastor, uh, Reverend Anderson, is here with us as well. So if y'all would stand up, we want to welcome you. Reverend Anderson, I usually don't dress this nice, but I knew you were coming. And I, and I, and I at least had to put a shirt on. And long pants. And socks. Any other announcements you can think of this morning, folks? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. If you would, let's stand and we'll sing. Thy great delay, Jesus, my Savior, waiting the coming day, Jesus, my Lord. But from grave he arose with a mighty triumph for his foes. He arose.
you know what I do of the other job that I have. And some of you don't. I work with kids that they're, uh, they have a label. They're ED kids, emotionally disturbed kids, middle schoolers. And we spend most of our time having conversations with them about one word, and that word is choices. You ever heard that word? The older I get, the more I think about the depth of my choices, how many I have. Have you ever thought about that? Truly, how many choices you have in life. Just getting up this morning, what choice did you have? Many of you were laying in bed and you go, I really, really need to go to the bathroom, but I'm going to lay here just a few more minutes before I get up. Is that true? You don't have to raise your hand, but that's a choice that we have. And then you go in, it's time for a shower, and you look at your towels and you go, well, is it going to be a, is it a white one? Is it the white fluffy one? Is it the blue one? Some of you have the nice towels out just when company comes, but some of you have the nice towels out all the time. You have to make that choice. And then if you're a lady, it takes y'all a little longer to get ready, right? Because y'all look so much better than we do, and, and we appreciate all that you do. But when you go to that sink, and you look at all that stuff, you've got choices to make. Right? Guy's choice is deodorant or not. <laughs> Polo or curve. Some of you old schoolers, brute by Fabergé. <laughs> old spice. But choices. And that's not even talking about when you go to the store. We live in a nation of plenty. And we go into Walmart and we go on the candy aisle and we go, wow. Look at all these options. Choices. And I talk to my kids at school so much about choices and the choices that they make and how they have they have lifelong effects sometimes. And these kids don't treat each other nice. They say bad things about each other. They hit each other. They want to get their way. They're hardheads. Sound familiar? We're that way too. This morning we had to make a choice where, whether to worship and where. We knew where. We would, but we didn't know where. Oh, getting lighter. Got a message. Turbo was up in the pier already. It said, Turbo's here. I said, tell Turbo we're going to try to have it on the pier. And my response was, okay. And it all came together. This morning, I'm going to talk to you about about Christ and what He has done for us. A story that I first came in contact with when I sat on my great aunt's bed in a little town called Lyman, South Carolina. Most of y'all don't even know where that is. A little mill town. And when it was time to go to bed, she made a choice as to what book she wanted to read to me. And she chose a Bible story book that had pictures in it. She could have chosen Dr. Seuss. She could have chosen Curious George, but she chose a book, the book. And she chose a story, the story, the story of Jesus. Now, she's no longer here. Her house isn't even there. A Bojangles is in its place. And when I ride by there, I think, that's one of the first places that I learned about Jesus. And now... They're slinging chicken there. Choices. Let's look at God's Word this morning. If you have your Bible, I invite you to turn with me to Luke 24. Luke 24. We're here today for this reason, beginning with verse 1. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. And they found the stone was rolled away. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. And in their fright, the women bowed down with their knees to the ground. But those men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how He told you while He was still with you in Galilee? 
The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, He said, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. And then they remembered His words. And when they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. May God bless the reading and the hearing of His Word. Friday as I was getting ready to leave school, I was very excited to leave school. Not because I don't like school, but it was Easter weekend. To be honest, some days I don't like school. I was really ready to leave and the kids had already packed up middle schoolers. You know how that is. You give them about five minutes free time and it's bad news. You know, they get in some trouble. We were talking, just trying to keep them engaged. and uh, They were getting ready to go and I said, just want to tell y'all happy Easter. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And one of the kids in the back said, what is Easter? <sighs> what do you do? What do you want to do? You want to pull up a chair beside him and say, here, let me tell you what Easter's all about. When I was trying to decide how to handle that, there's a kid that's sitting up front. He's taller than I am. Pretty low functioning kid. And he looks and he says, Don't you know what Easter's all about? It's about the bunny. <laughs> and the bell rang and they went out into the world. Don't you know what Easter's all about? It's about. Y'all gotta do better. <laughs> Let, let me change my pronunciation. Don't you know what Easter's all about? Easter's all about Jesus. And Easter's all about the power of God. And Easter's all about Jesus being who He said He was. And Easter is all about the grave having no power over Jesus. Easter is all about Jesus being Savior, King, Lord. Messiah, Easter is all about you and me as well. When we talk about Easter, we say things like, what kind of eggs do you want to get? Plastic ones or real ones? It's getting lighter, look. How many of your plastic egg people? Y'all are ashamed to say it. <laughs> You're ashamed to say it. Two children back there being honest. Some of y'all are real egg people, right? Okay. We really know what Easter's all about. You know, it's not about plastic or real. It's the fact that we know what Jesus is about and what He's done and the fact that He died for us on Good Friday and He rose again so that we could understand that we could have life eternal. But the question of it is, are we any different than the kids in my class that, that they say bad things about each other and they treat each other bad and they don't help each other and when kids drop something in the hall, instead of bending down to help them, they laugh at them and they kick the stuff and they keep on walking. We know it's not all about the money, but sometimes the way we interact with people, you can't tell. So what I'm saying to you today is, this is wonderful that we have gathered to worship the risen Lord. But oh, if we could just live today and tomorrow as Easter people. If we could just deal with the fallen, the way Jesus dealt with the fallen, if we would kneel down and pick them up, if we would encourage them, if people would say something that we don't agree with, we don't have to try to right every wrong that they think or feel. Love them. Easter people. This congregation is a congregation that's forming, it's molding, it's becoming. I was here for 12 years and moved away and was gone about two years and then came back. Last year was my first Sunday back here. It's been a year we've been back. It's hard to believe that. And we're forming. 
We're growing. And let me tell you what we're going to become. This congregation. We're going to be different from other churches. Why? Most churches, if they shut the door, the community would not even know. You can say amen. It's fine. Most churches, if they shut the doors, the community would not know. We're not going to be that way. We are going to be people that embrace the resurrection of Jesus every day. And those ladies, when they went to that tomb, they wanted, they longed to see Jesus and to be close to Him again. And when they got there, He wasn't there. And then guess what? They were closer to Him than they'd ever been. You're here this morning in the bad weather. A little chilly. A little sleepy. I saw that, y'all. <laughs> but you're here because you know what it's all about. And you're going out into the world today because you know what it's all about. And you're going to deal with your neighbor in a new way because you know what it's all about. And you're not going to worry about labels. You're not going to worry about political party. What would you think of me? You're going to love. What is this day all about? Jesus. We're going to have communion this morning. We're going to divide into several stations. Those of you who are going to help me serve, you can come forward. Uh, it's going to be a little little cramped, uh, but we'll make it work. The way we have communion here, uh, we have one person that holds the bread and one person that holds the cup. And as you come forward, you will take a piece of bread and they will say to you, the body of Christ broken for you. And you'll take that bread and you will dip it into the cup. And then you'll receive and you'll hear the blood of Christ given for you. Uh, come on forward, Jill and Sandy. Uh, let's uh, have a few moments to prepare our hearts for communion, realizing what it means. Those of you who claim Christ as King, you're welcome to come forward uh, and receive communion and sense His presence with us today. A few moments of silent meditation, and then I will close you out. hear the waves crashing, oh God, we realize how powerful you are. When we feel the caress of the breeze, we're reminded of your Holy Spirit that moves as it wills, fans the flames of your love throughout this place, and provides us comfort. Lord, as we hear your word, we realize who you are. That our identity is firmly enmeshed in that. We know we're sinners. We confess those sins to you today. We're thankful that we can cling to your word when you tell us that if we confess our sins, you're faithful and you're just and you will forgive us of those sins. And as we come to the table this morning, may we be reminded what Easter is all about. That Jesus died for us and that He rose again. And as we take that bread, and as we dip it into the cup, may we hear His Word say to us, Rise. Go. Serve. Love. May we hear Him say, You're forgiven. Now go forgive. May we hear Him say, I love you. May we hear. May we feel. May we leave empowered, anew and afresh. What can wash away our sins? 
Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Thank You that You are who You said You were. Thank You for the beauty of this moment where we can experience You again. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. For resurrection. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Can you imagine a being that could speak to the noise we hear and say, Be still? And the ocean would have to subside and listen to him. What an amazing Christ. What an amazing son that transformed himself from a flesh son to a risen savior to his mom. Not only to his mom, but to all of us. Let us look to him. Oh, Heavenly Father, you are indeed amazing. We thank you for the miracle inside me. And I thank God for the miracles beside me. Thank you for allowing me to be a witness this morning, Resurrection Day. Now, dear Lord, you have blessed us in the city which is here. Now, dear Lord, as we depart, never from your presence, bless us in the field. And to the one who can present us faultless before the throne, we all say thank you, and we say amen, amen, amen and amen. service we had 282 uh, here this morning at 6 30 and uh, I think we we're going to be pretty close to that uh, right now sorry the weather is not beautiful but we don't have any say so in that but the good news of the gospel is this this is Easter morning and we're here to celebrate a risen Savior and we're so glad that we're able to do that together no matter where you're from uh, this morning I met folks from uh, Pennsylvania we know people from Georgia we got some people from North Carolina where are you from? Virginia. We got snowbirds that are getting ready to go home this week, so they're going to be leaving. You're from where? New York. Where else? Virginia. A lot of South Carolinians, so we're, we're glad you're here. Yes. Michigan. Yes. Michigan. So that's wonderful. Well, who else? North Carolina. No, we don't talk about Tar <laughs> We love you. We love you, North Carolinians. 
Now tonight at the ball game might be a little different. <laughs> uh, anyone else? Where are you from? Yes. The Mountaineers. Mountaineers, West Virginia. There's always a lot of them around. Well, thanks for coming out this morning to worship. My name is Richard, and uh, I'm a chaplain here, and, and it is a privilege to serve you. This is a ragtag bunch that worship here. Uh, we don't put on any airs. We love God. We love people. And what you see is what you get. Look, I usually don't dress like this. I usually have on a golf shirt and some shorts and some flip-flops. So you call me. This is the best it gets. <laughs> so you should be honored. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. If you would, let's stand. We're going to sing our morning song of praise together. Lo, in the grave he lay. This is an old hymn. And uh, we have... Lo, oh, in the grave he lay, Jesus my Savior, waiting the coming day, Jesus my Lord. services, I say to people, you know, the second service is the same at the first, but there's no sunrise. Well, actually, you see more of the sun now than the sunrise people did, so you didn't miss a thing this morning other than you got more sleep than everybody else. Uh, four o'clock came real early from preaching, so I hope I don't fall asleep during the sermon this morning. Um, when you look at choices and the choices that you have to make, it's amazing. The older that I get in life, the more that I seem to, to come to understand the, the amount of choices that we make on a daily basis. And when I was young, like a lot of these baseball players, I didn't think about that as much. I just kind of, you just live. You just do and things happen, right? But as you get older, you kind of understand the amount of choices that you have. For example, when you woke up this morning, did you make some choices? As you get older, guys, you have to make decisions like, I really have to go to the restroom. Do I get up and do this right now or can I get a couple more hours sleep before I do that? Do any of y'all wrestle with that? Don't raise your hand. Uh, some of us do. And uh, and then we get up and, and then we go, okay, do, do we have coffee before we have a shower or, or, or what? Then what do we put in our coffee and how many scoops of coffee do we get? We open up the cabinet, how many, there's 12 mugs here, which one do I use? Do I use the lucky mug today or do I use the number one dad mug? You know, what, what do we do? And then we go into the restroom and we have to choose which towel we want. The fluffy blue one or the, or the white one or like me, a full body one that you know, <laughs> you know, that you could wash a truck with. But, it's just choices everywhere. And even, that's not even talking about when we go to the store. Do you understand the, the, the plenty that we have in this country? We go to the store and you walk down the cereal aisle and if you really wanted to look at all that cereal, how long would you be there? That's just cereal. And then you got to put milk on. Well, you can buy skimmed. You can buy organic, you can buy 2%, you can buy whole, you can buy almond. 
soy, cashew, coconut. You see what I'm life is just choice after choice after choice. And I work with some kids. My other job is I work with emotionally disturbed kids. Those birds are loud, I'm sorry. Um, the kids too. <laughs> but I work with emotionally disturbed kids and they're middle schoolers. And the conversations that I have with them over and over are about choices. Why do you hit your friend? Why do you say bad things? Why do you run down the hall? It makes no sense. Why do you want to go to the bathroom as soon as class starts when you just walk down the hall right past the bathroom? I know the answer to that one. They want to get out of class. Well, we were getting ready to leave on Friday, and I was very ready to leave because it was Easter weekend and there's just a lot going on. And there was like five minutes I told them to pack up, and uh, they got a little loose talking to each other, and then it was about time to leave. And I said, Y'all have a wonderful Easter. And this kid in the back of the room said, Mr. Jenkins, what is Easter? What is Easter? And then this kid in the front is about my height, 15 years old, low functioning student. He stands up and he looks at him and he says, You know Easter, it's all about the bunny. <laughs> now, we laugh at that. We know what Easter is about, or we wouldn't be out here on a cold morning when it's soggy and wet. We know what Easter is about. What is Easter about? It's all about? That's good. Y'all did better than the first group. They were asleep. Okay. It's all about Jesus. And what is it about Jesus? He rose from the dead. Okay. And what does that mean? It means that nothing can defeat the plan of God. It means that nothing is impossible. It means that Jesus is who He said He was. It means that the Jesus who said He could die for our sins was who He said He was. He said He would rise and He did. What is Easter about? Jesus. So the kids said it's all about the bunny. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness. You know, these kids I work with, they, they say mean things to each other. They don't follow the rules. They run down the hall. Y'all don't know the half of it I'm talking about. <laughs> and they don't even know what Easter's about. They're not nice to their friends. But then I think about us. And we, we know what Easter's about. You just said it. And sometimes we're, we're not nice to our friends. Sometimes we run down the hall. And sometimes, like these kids, you know, when a, a student's walking down the hall and they drop something, instead of bending over to help them, they laugh and they kick it. How many times do we see somebody that's down and instead of bending over to help them, we kick them with our tongue or we don't encourage them? The story this morning, the scripture this morning, is something that you, you've heard many times, I'm sure. I first encountered this story I was at my great aunt's house in a little town called Lyman, South Carolina. Y'all probably don't know where that is. But she made a choice when it was time to put me to bed when I was about five, six, seven. And she would pick a book for me to read. She could have picked Dr. Seuss or she could have picked Curious George or whatever. But she had a Bible story book. She'd open that book up and she'd teach me about Jesus. Well, she's gone now. She's in heaven. And I ride by her house every day on the way to work. And that house is no longer her house. It's been bought by Bojangles. So the place that I first learned about Jesus, people are making choices what kind of chicken they want. If you have your Bible, let's look to a story very familiar to, to you, I hope. And if it's not, after today it will be because it's one of the most important things you will ever hear in your life. This morning, we're in Luke, the 24th chapter. Luke chapter 24, and God's Word says this to us today. 
On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices that they had prepared and went to the tomb. And they found the stone rolled away. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And while they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. Other translations call them angels, of course. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He's risen. Remember how He told you while He was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners and be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. And then they remembered His words. And when they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. May God bless the reading and the hearing of His words. For some, Easter is about the bunny. And for some, you have to answer questions like, what kind of eggs do you want? Plastic or real eggs? Okay? What do you use? Are you plastic egg people or are you real egg people? Okay? Who says plastic? Y'all are better than the first group. They, were, they said they were all real egg people, but I don't believe that. Plastic's easy. Okay? More people get the plastic ones, but some people are real egg people and they die. <laughs> But what I'm concerned about this morning is because we say we believe in the resurrection, because that is what the church is founded upon, the blood of Jesus and the fact that He rose from the dead. Because of that, how does that impact our lives? I recently read, read a, uh, a challenge, basically, online, and it said this, most churches that if they close the door, the communities that they're in wouldn't even realize it. I want you to listen to that again. Most churches, if they close their doors, the communities that they are in would not even realize it. What does that mean? That means these are plastic churches. These are not the real ones. If we are people that are people of the resurrection, if we cling firmly to the fact that we have been redeemed by Jesus and He is God in the flesh, and He rose again, that's going to impact how we deal with other people on a daily basis. This church is very interesting here. If you're visiting, we're glad you're here. I know some of you are from a long way away and you may never be back. But this may just be a spot where you've happened to be in this morning. But I'm going to tell you one thing about this church. Over the next year, we are going to become one that when it shuts down, if it ever does, the community is going to hurt because we're going to love people. And we're going to do it creatively. And we're going to give until it hurts. You know why? Because that's what we call to do. What's Easter all about? Jesus. That's bad. <laughs> I'm not a cheerleader. But I'm going to tell you this. If that baseball team went out with that enthusiasm today, <laughs> Coach, how's it going to work if they go out there and they they have been given a game plan? You have told them, right? And if they go out with no enthusiasm and they don't execute the game plan, if they're playing a team that's good, what's going to happen? It's not going to be great. <laughs> it's not going to be good. Let me tell you what. Jesus has given us a game plan. And the biggest problem we have is we get amped up for Easter and then the rest of the year we're like this. Oh, man. Oh, it's hard to be a Christian. Look, we serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever men may say. I see His hand of mercy. I hear His voice of cheer. And just the time I need Him, He's always near. Folks, they are people that need the love of Jesus right around you. And they need authentic love. They don't need faith. They don't need phony. Guys, you need to be who you are. When you go out there to play baseball, don't try to be somebody you're not. You're all right, Bryce Harper. 
You don't even know who Rod Carew is, most likely. If you go out there and try to bat like him, it's not going to work well. You're not Wade Boggs. You're not Kirby Puckett. You're not Mike Schmidt. If you were, I want to meet you. <laughs> be who you are. Who God created you to be. Who Jesus died for. Who He rose again for. That's who you need to be because there's people in this world that need the love that you have in you. They don't need you to be anybody else but you. Do you think you deserve the love of God? No. Do you think you're a sinner? Good. Because you are. Because I am too. But you know what? Jesus loves you. He died for you. And He rose again. Do you think your marriage is beyond repair? Keep believing that God can do something. Do you think that there's nothing you have to offer? You have something to offer. And that is you. The interesting thing about this story is these ladies go to the tomb because they grieve Jesus. They miss Him. And they miss Him so much they go to anoint His body. His dead body. They long to be close to Him and they go there. Some translations talk about they wonder how they're even going to get the, the stone moved. And they get there and it's moved already. And, and then they go there and Jesus isn't even there. So they go to be close to Him and then He's not there. But ultimately what happens, they're closer to Him than they ever were. Because they realize that He truly was who He said. I don't know what burdens you carry today, but I'm going to tell you this. God loves you. I don't know what you're struggling with, but I'm going to tell you this. God has a purpose for you being here today. I'm going to tell you this about myself. I'm as good a sinner as you'll ever meet. But I'm going to tell you something more important. My Savior is the best Savior you'll ever be. And you need to cling to that and hold on to that. This morning, you're going to have an opportunity to come to the table. The way we have communion uh, we use a form that the early church used called intention. What happens, I break a loaf, and you'll come by and you will take the one piece of bread from that loaf. And then I'll have the cup, and you will dip the bread in the cup, and then it'll be at that point. Uh, so we'll have communion. I'll have, one, I'll have two people up here, and we'll kind of work around and, and each have communion. If you claim Christ as King, if He's your Lord, come to the table. We would love to have you. If you'd like to talk to me later about Jesus and what all this means, and this is the first time you've heard His name, we'd love to talk with you. We'd love to share what He's done in my life and to tell you how you can know Him personally. Thank you for coming today. I want to give you just a few moments to prepare your hearts before you come to the table to confess your sins, and uh, then we'll begin communion. I'll close you after a brief moment of silent prayer. May we pray together. Spirit if we claim Christ as King and if we've been born again. and If we do that, we should realize that the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, the same power lives within us.